everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and it's time for some battling action. We're playing Unmatched Adventures. This is the solo co-op standalone expansion for the 1v1 or more battling game Unmatched. And no disclaimer for this one, my friend backed the project, and I'm borrowing it from him. And if you like the content in the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So Unmatched is, again, a tactical battling game. You'll have different characters running around. In competitive, you're just trying to get next to each other and beat each other up. Last fighter standing wins. But in Unmatched Adventures, it comes with two different bosses, at least in this initial set. You've got the Martian Invader, and then there's also the Mothman. I'm fighting Mars right now. And additionally, they'll have a number of little henchmen mini-bosses equal to the number of players. You do have to play at least a two-handed solo, so I have two here. And a lot of the core action in the game comes down to the action card. So on your turn, you get two actions. You can use one to move up to your movement value, and you also get to draw a card when you do that. That's called a maneuver. Or you can spend one action to play a card with a lightning bolt, or you can attack somebody. Most characters are melee fighters, which means they need to be adjacent to their enemy. But some are also ranged, which means they just need to be in a location that matches at least one color in their target's location. Like Nikola Tesla here could shoot the Ant Queen from there to there, since they both have this sort of sandy background. And any card that has either a red attack icon or this little mix of attack and defense purple can be used to attack. The defender can choose to play a purple or blue card, and you're basically just comparing the numbers. So like if my attack is four and your defense is two, you take two damage, uh, take down from your thing. But in the case of the solo co-op mode, instead the enemies have these decks here. You're going to flip a card each time they want to attack or each time they defend, and you'll get the matching statistic. They'll also have special powers and things that happen. And the initiative in the game, the turn order is handled by these initiative cards. This is sort of like an Aeon's End-ish style system, where we have one card for each player, one card for each mini-boss, one card for the Martians. Although you'll sometimes have other cards, for example, the Martians add two, in this case, because we have two players invasion wave cards uh, so you'll see those that have like their own little activations and that goes into the main way you'll lose the martians are going to be putting down these doom tokens or in this case because i guess jerry got a special version or something these little martians they'll be going into these fields and then every once in a while the threat level will raise and it will raise more based on how many martians are in the fields Whenever you get to this advanced invasion spot, you're going to flip over one of these tokens, which will activate an icon on the Martian invaders cards to make them stronger and stronger. And if that happens four times, if you flip four of these, you lose the game. And normally all we have to do to win is defeat the Martian invader who has life equal to 10 times the number of players. But they do have these event cards that can make the game tougher by drawing one to three of them. I'm using the Vanquish All Evil One that forces me to also defeat all of the minions. So normally I could technically ignore the Tarantula and the Ant Queen and just go straight for the Martian invader's face. But uh, I got to defeat everybody this time. And a quick comment on my characters. Uh, the set comes with four characters, although you can use other unmatched sets like the Marvel ones to play the game. So Annie Christmas has two move. She starts with 14 life. She's also got Charlie, her little ally that starts with eight life. And speaking of allies, you'll see the cards will sometimes have a specific character's name. So only Annie can use this to attack or defend. And then this one says Annie, so Charlie could use it instead. But her special ability, Necklace of Pearls, says that she gets plus two to her attack if her target has more health than her. Which with her having 14 at the moment means that only the Martian invader is going to be affected by that. The minions each have 10 life. Meanwhile, Tesla is a bit more complicated, so he's also got two move. His big thing is that he has these Tesla coils. He's going to charge one at the end of each of his turns. If he starts a turn with both of them charged, then he gets to for free hurt everybody adjacent to him for one and move them up to one. And that doesn't uncharge his coils. They still stick around. But then pretty much all of his cards will give him bonuses if he chooses to discharge one or both coils. So he's got kind of like this give and take of power going on. And then the Martian invaders do their alien thing. The Ant Queen's going to add more and more of these strange pheromone cards to the initiative deck that are going to make weird things happen. And the Tarantula puts down these little web tokens that are going to make it tougher for us to move around the map and can never be removed. So that's what we're facing up against. Let's go. All right, so first we have one of the Invasion Wave cards. These initiative cards will have a right now effect or uh, end or I should say an end of round effect. So what you do is you do the right now effect. And then once every card has been flipped, that triggers the end of the round. And then you resolve from left to right order all the end of round effects. 
It says, as any player may discard a card, if no one does, add an alien to one field bordering the Martian invader's space. Well, we don't want that. So I'm going to have Tesla discard Repulsion Blast. Its most powerful ability is to make an opponent discard one random card, which is amazing and competitive and not very useful at all in co-op, so I'm not going to care too much about that card. So that prevents the alien getting placed. All right, and then it's Player One's turn, which is going to be, who is that? Any Christmas. So Annie Christmas is over here near the Tarantula. We got Charlie next to her. Again, he's got eight life. And looking at her options, she's got a defensive card that isn't that strong, but it'll stop her from being reduced below one health. Clearly the wrong time to draw that is the beginning of the game. She's got two keep your hands to yourself, a three card. And after combat, I can move the fighters up to two spaces, which doesn't seem to matter too much at this point. Better Together is my strongest one. After combat, if your fighter is adjacent to a friendly fighter, you and each friendly fighter can recover one health. Again, not great at the beginning of the game when I haven't been hurt. And finally, a few more pearls do two damage to each opposing fighter adjacent to Annie. So I think I'll maneuver first and maybe get Annie next to the Tarantula. And then Charlie, who's a ranged fighter, could go there, where his green to green will let him shoot the Tarantula if we want to. Give me some options. When you maneuver, you get to draw a card. Another Better Together. All right, well, maybe I'll... Here, I might as well... Stack these to save a little space. And then both my fighters can move up to two spaces. I could discard a card to gain its boost value and movement for one or both fighters. So like if I discarded the few more pearls, I would give my characters four movement. But for now, I'm not going to do that. I'll just go one, two, one, two. There we go. And then even though it's a bit of a waste, it's the best thing I have. So I'm going to do better together for a four attack. The ability won't matter at all. And I'm not benefiting from Necklace of Pearls, sadly, because Annie has 14 life and the Spider, the Tarantula, only has 10. And again, all you do is you flip over the card and you see what the defense is. In this case, two. So we're getting two damage through. It's going to knock him down to eight. Take that, Spidey. And then if the ability applies, oh, cancel all effects on the opponent's card. That doesn't matter. If Tarantula's in a space with a web value, also ignore the card's value. So he does get stronger when he's on his own webs. But yeah, none of that applies because my card's effect wasn't doing anything anyway. And uh, there is, by the way, a 0-0 card in each of the enemy decks, which is the one you want to draw. But it also triggers a reshuffle of their cards. But for now, I know that one Tarantula card is out. And that was Annie, a little punchy punchy on the buggy buggy. Or wait, are spiders bugs? I guess not, right? Arachnids? Oh, Tarantula wants some revenge. So this is how all the enemy cards are going to look. It's going to say they take a turn with a move value of three. That's just how all of them are. And basically, they're just trying to get to the closest fighter they can. And then they attack them after they move. Or if they're already next to them, they don't move at all. If they can't reach anybody, instead of taking a turn, they just advance that threat track by one. Now, the Tarantula will, at the end of the round, place a web token in his space, which is going to boost him if he's on it for a lot of his actions, and uh, also going to, again, restrict our movement, because when we move into it, we have to stop moving, but we're not worried about that yet. Now, he's next to Annie. She could choose to play a card to block. You do that before you see what their damage is, but I kind of want her to get hurt a bit, maybe down to like eight or six, so she can benefit from her necklace of pearls. So we'll just take the damage. Three eight legs of terror. Ah! After combat, place a web token in Tarantula space, then place Tarantula in the closest empty starting space. Oh god, and put Tarantula's initiative card on the bottom of the initiative deck. He's getting a double turn? Well, that was ridiculous. But three damage unblocked will get Annie down to 11. And the closest starting space is where Annie came from. He's leaving a web behind. That was terrible. Yeah, we'll see him back in just a moment. I want to kill that guy ASAP. And our next is the other Martian invasion wave. All heroes and sidekicks adjacent to an occupied field take one damage. Occupied means that there's at least one of those aliens. Doom tokens in there. There's none. If no fighter took damage this way, add an alien to the lowest numbered empty field. Uh, which sadly is Annie's. It'll be easy for her to get rid of it at the end of any maneuver action. If you have at least one character next to an occupied field, you can remove a single alien from it. But Annie already went and Nikola Tesla's all the way on the other side of the board. So we're not gonna be able to do much about that. All right, and then it is Nikola Tesla's turn. And he's all the way over here. His two movement won't even get him to anybody. So maybe I'll do a boost move and punch an ant. So his abilities, he's got a four and a two card that can be attack or defense. X-ray radiation, he gets to reveal the top card of the opponent's deck, which lets you discard the card, which again doesn't matter very much in solo co-op. In competitive, if you run out of cards in your deck, you don't reshuffle, so it can actually be pretty terrible. 
Or if he does both coils, he can add the boost value to his card. So that's really good. Kinetic induction is a two. And then after combat, ooh, he can charge one coil. Or if you want the combat charge both. Fully charge just lets him charge both coils and gain an action. Wow, so that's amazing for a combo. And finally, intense experimentation. Uh, after combat, draw one card. And then I can discharge my coils to draw even more cards and potentially heal. By the way, he'll maneuver first and draw. Remote control, move all opposing fighters up to two spaces and gain an action. That's awesome. Well, you know, with that, I think I might want to get both of them near the tarantula and try to, like, get a double attack thing going. So he'll just use his basic two movement, I think. But then for a second action, since none of these are awesome, he's going to maneuver again. Oh, and he got another fully charged. Yes. And then he's going to boost his move with intense experimentation to move four. Two plus the two boost value here. Go one, two, three, four. Then he's going to play remote control to move every opposing fighter up to two spaces. Oh, no, he can't do that because he's out of action. So never mind. We'll save that for later. All right. And now it's the Ant Queen's turn. And yes, this uh, Texas says she's going to add a fair, strange pheromone card. Oh, but only if the threat marker is three or higher. But she does advance the threat herself. So actually, that shouldn't happen this time because the Martian Invaders card is going to come later, and that's the main one that advances threats. But the Queen is going to come over here to attack Tesla. Oh, that's right. I should have charged a coil. So there's not much point in using kinetic induction to defend and charge my coils. God, Tesla has some cool yellow cards, but nothing. I shouldn't have gotten rid of the card that let me draw extra. Yeah, it would have been amazing against the Ant Queen. Whoops. All right, so for now, he'll just tank it. She's attacking for three... And if the Ant Queen lost the combat, that means that I successfully defended all her damage. Or if I was attacking her, I dealt at least one damage. Threat would advance by one, but I'm just taking three damage. Which means, like, Annie, he's down to 11. Okay, and then we get the Martian Invader's actual turn. And we're going to advance Threat a number of spaces equal to one plus a number of occupied fields, which uh, currently would be two advancement. Oh, yeah, let's see. Okay, I'm going to have him attack Annie, I guess. Because, again, I want her life to be a little bit lower. And I'm not going to have her block yet. We'll see how that goes eventually. Okay, nullification beam. Oh my gosh, four damage. Well, hey, that's uh, definitely what I wanted, right? Now she can certainly get her plus two bonus. Now this effect here with the icon will only trigger if the matching invasion token has been flipped, which again is going to happen whenever the threat track goes all the way up. So we're ignoring that. But after combat, place an alien in each field bordering the Martian invader's space. Yuck. So that's right here on four. And the last initiative card is going to be the tarantula again. I almost forgot about that. And they'll move right there next to Annie. And this time I think she probably should do something. Maybe she'll do keep your hands to herself because if she can move each fighter up to two spaces, she can get the tarantula next to Tesla and we can kind of combo attack that guy. So sure, she'll use a three defense. He's attacking for four. If he's in a space with a web token, it'd be six instead. He's not. So she does take one more damage down to six. This might be a fast game, y'all. Of course, that was my choice, but now I got to make sure I have defense pretty consistently. Oh, and I can't forget, after combat, I can move each fighter in the combat up to two spaces. I'm just going to move Tarantula here. I want her to use her Pearl ability to hit both of these people. All right, now we resolve end of turn effects. Nothing, 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 nothing. Ant Queen advances threat one, and then if it's three or higher, she adds a strange pheromone. It's just going to be the one advancement. And then he advances it one plus occupied fields, which is going to be uh, plus two, so that's three. So that's four threat advancement, and then a web on the tarantula. One, two, three, four, yeeks. And uh, by the way, these numbers underneath will sometimes be called for by certain enemy cards. It'll be like uh, their attack or defense is equal to the threat level. And here's another web. Yay! And that's the end of one round. We shuffle these uh, bad boys up, and then we see if we survive. All right, it's initiative time. Tarantula's first, darn it. All right, so you can attack uh, Annie or Tesla. Let's go and do Annie and use this two defense only card. Oh, jeez. Oh my god, it's another one of these. So she's taking four damage. Ah. <laughs> because he's on a web. Wowie, wowie. Shortest playthrough ever. I gotta get Charlie involved, right? Take some damage for her. <laughs> All right, and then player one, that is, oh, that's Annie. All right, well, first things first, she's definitely going to attack the Tarantula with Better Together. Uh, it will be a six value because she certainly has less life than he does. And then uh, she and each friendly fighter adjacent will recover one health. That's pretty nice. All right, and Tarantula, yay! <laughs> this is uh, the Deception card, the zero zero card that I mentioned. So in this case, uh, it's going to reshuffle his deck, but he blocks his zero, so he takes six. He's only down, uh, he's down to two life. And Annie gets to heal to three. And then I was going to have Annie maneuver and like try to get away and get rid of an alien, but with him down to two life, this just seems to make too much sense. I'm going to use a few more pearls and do two damage to each opposing fighter that is adjacent to her, so that's going to finish off the tarantula. All his webs stay. 
And it's going to get the Martian invaders also adjacent down to 18. Take that. See, our webhead is completely gone. Ah! Which, again, is not normally a requirement for victory, but with the Vanquish All Evil event card we've added, it is required to win. And Annie's in a great spot with uh, <laughs> two or three life left, uh, the bad guy next to her, and a single card in her deck. Let's see what happens. Oh, and now it's the Martian Invader coming to attack her. So she is absolutely going to use Keep Your Hands to Yourself to uh, block for three, and then move each fighter in the combat up to two spaces afterwards. Let's see how this goes. The Martian... Okay, good. Uh, deal one. Oh, God. After combat, deal one damage each opposing fighter in the Martian Invaders zone, which is, oh, my gosh, friggin' everybody. <laughs> Gray and green. Thanks, Mars. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's right. That's right. Ha, ha, ha. Hold on. So after combat effects, these are both after combat effects, and mine is to move each fighter in the combat up to two spaces. And uh, when it's tied timing like this, the defender goes first, which means I can move him into a different color i mean can i ah yes yes okay if i go here then yeah there's nobody on dark green so his effect will then be canceled excellent all right and then we've got martian invasion wave one. Oh my gosh all here is the sidekicks adjacent to a field take one damage that's everybody i forgot about that so annie's at two with no cards charlie's at seven and tesla's doing okay with ten all right and then ah uh, the ant queen's going She's just going to attack uh, Tesla, it looks like. And yeah, I still kind of don't want to block. So I'm kind of like wasting stuff if I do. Yeah, let's just see how things go. Uh, oh my god, four damage. And plus one of this card's value for each revealed strange pheromone, which is none. But yeah, well, they're getting high value attacks here. All right, and then... Ah, there we go, Tesla. And because he's starting his turn with both coils charged, he deals one damage each opposing fighter and then can move them up to one space. So that'll bring the Ant Queen down to nine. Okay, and what does he want to do? Hmm. I guess he should try to, like, hurt the Ant Queen, right? So he'll use X-Ray Radiation. So I'm going to get to reveal the top card of their deck, and then I can use one coil to discard it or two to add its boost value to mine. So sure, he'll attack with that. So we start him with four. All right, and the Ant... Ooh, yes, okay, okay, zero. So what was I doing? Four. Okay, and then I get to reveal... Um. I don't think this gets discarded yet because the combat's still happening, maybe. So maybe I still get to reveal. Okay, and this has a boost of two. So that'd be six damage? Sure, I'll use both my coils to do that. That seems great. But then these get shuffled. So that is going to be a six. So the Ant Queen's down to three. I'm definitely getting a lot of damage in here. So so are we. Okay, and then I don't think can finish them off. Yeah, I mean, he's got basically no great uh, <laughs> options. Uh, so that did uncharge both. Okay, I think then he's going to maneuver. Okay, repulsion blast. After combat, move the opposing fighter for two spaces. And then I can also move me. And oh, that's right, discard a card. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to actually move for the maneuver. I'll just stay where I am, but that will get rid of the one doom token next to me. That's something at least. And then finally, I think this is the, yeah, any player can discard a card. I guess I can afford to discard the remote control, maybe? Sure. Or no, I guess that could, like, move them to not be able to attack us once. Let's get rid of one of the fully charged. So that'll prevent an uh, alien from being placed. And that is that. Uh, the tarantula is dead, so their card comes out. So the only things we're resolving are Martian Invaders going to increase threat. And then Ant Queen's going to increase and potentially stop putting a strange pheromone. But actually, the order worked out in our favor. So the Martian Invader, they're actually advancing at two, but it doesn't matter. Once it reaches here, it just stops. Bounces back to here. And now they're going to get that bonus on future cards. And then the Ant Queen advances it to one, which does not get them a strange pheromone card because it's not at three or higher. All right, initiative is going to be big here. If uh, the Ant Queen goes first, then I won't be able to kill her and stop her from taking a turn. Uh, Annie Christmas is in danger, although I do not have Charlie closer to the Martian Invader, so she shouldn't get killed. But she does have zero cards. Anything's possible. Ah, uh, darn it. Ant Queen is first. It was probably the worst result since, again, I probably could have killed them completely. So they're going to attack Tesla. Now I think I'll use Kinetic Induction. He's got one coil charged uh, from the end of his turn. So he'll charge the other coil, which means when he starts his turn, he'll get to do a free damage to the Queen. That seems pretty nice. He's taking two damage, though. Darn it. Oh, okay, never mind. This is the one that adds uh, value for strange pheromones. There aren't any, but yeah, four versus two. So he takes two damage, brings him to friggin' four, <laughs> but he does get to charge his other coil. All right, all right. Uh, oh, gosh, everyone next to a field takes one. It's Annie and Charlie. So they're right there. Da, 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 one life. <laughs> 
See, a lesson of a match, maybe don't just let damage pass through. Okay, hey, speaking of Andy, there she goes. Oh, well, she's certainly going to maneuver first. Let's see what card she gets. Okay, that's not defense or attack. It's not great. I think she's going to maneuver again in a second. But yeah, let's see. I'm going to have... Um, oh, man, is there, that's not even a way wait for Charlie to like be able to shoot at the Martian. Okay, well, I'll go there with Charlie, so he has to stop moving. And then Annie can go there and remove this guy at the end of the maneuver. And then she's going to maneuver again and pray for, you know, a card with values. What the frig? <laughs> Captain's orders. Place Annie in any empty space in her zone. Then place another friendly fighter in an empty space in Annie's zone. Game one action. Yeah, that's great. It's great. Can I get a card with numbers on it? But okay, second maneuver. We'll get Charlie here. So he's closer. So well, I guess they're equally close, but then we can choose. Or can we choose? Actually, yeah, what is a tiebreaker? Yeah, just checked. We get to choose. So he'll go to, or the Martian will go towards him. He can shoot back if we ever get an attack card since they're both on green. Beautiful. All right, and next there's Tesla. So Ant Queen takes a free one damage from the fully charged coils. And then I have friggin' no idea what to do because I definitely can't kill the Ant Queen even with only having two life. I guess I'll have Tesla maneuver first and not move or let's see. Come on, man. Where are my... <laughs> Sorry, everybody. It's very frustrating to draw these, you know, usually very nice uh, yellow cards. <sighs> okay. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Tesla's going to friggin' maneuver again just to draw. Hey, it's a defense. Ooh, let's me draw cards. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like that at least. Yeah, I think through all that, he's just staying put. All right. And then... And he can, one can discard a card. Tesla will certainly do that to prevent an alien being placed. And then it's going to be Martian Invader doing a turn. Oh, but first, let's decide. Uh, let's get rid of uh, remote control. And as we said, Martian Invader is going to attack Charlie. Uh, and he continues to have no defense card. So it's just two. That's not the right symbol. Oh, and then deal one damage to each opposing fighter in the Martian Invader zone, which is Annie. Are we dead? Are you kidding me? <sighs> it's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. <laughs> So um, usually like losing your main fighter would be that it for the player. But in this mode, you can like keep fighting with a helper. Although in this case, uh, very few of the cards can be used by Charlie. And then three damage, two from the attack and one from the power to Charlie. And Annie is done. All right. And then doo -doo 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 -doo. so Ant Queen's first. Doesn't get a strange pheromone. Um, then Martian. There's no people anywhere, so it's just one more for the Martian. Oh, that's great. It's Annie, or not Annie anymore. So currently, uh, none of the cards can be used by Charlie, so I guess Charlie will maneuver and get... Hey, look! Look at this great card! Look at this great five attack. <laughs> yeah, useless. Annie, okay. And, oh, I guess I should move him first. Although if he just, like, runs really far away, Tesla will get attacked a bunch. <sighs> I don't know what the right thing to do here is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess he'll just stay where he is. Because he could... Well, Tesla's got his, like, move people thing. So, sure. Like, maybe he'll run away toward the ant and try to get the uh, Martians not to attack us. Okay, and then he'll maneuver again. Hey, look at this! Yay! <laughs> it's an attack that he could use. Or a defense. And then he's just going to hope that... Well, I guess the ant could attack... Uh, yeah, so there we go. No, that's not far and away enough. There we go. So now the Martian can't reach him. And we'll see how that goes. Come on, Tesla. Come on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so Ant, one automatic damage. And Tesla still has basically no way to hit anybody. All right, so maneuver first. Hey, yes. After coming, me a starch coils again in action. Ooh, and also draw a card. Go ahead, Tesla. And then I'm going to go here for Tesla. Got a plan. Because for his second action, I'm going to remote control, move all opposing fighters for the two spaces and get another action. So I keep going. Move the Ant to where we can fight him. And one, two, three, move the Martian just far away enough that with three movement, they can't reach us. So they'll just raise threat. Okay, and then I have another action. Seven hearts. We're attacking the the ante. And they have one life. So just like, don't block me. <laughs> uh, the value of this card is equal to the threat instead, which is three, which is three. Yay. Okay, we killed the ant. We killed the ant. Get out of here. And before they had activated, that's the best part. Okay, and then... Ooh, if I discharge both coils, I gain an action and draw a card. Heck yeah. So I have another action and I get to draw. Oh, I love it. And then certainly for my last action, I'm just going to draw again. Uh, okay. And then I get to charge one. Cool. All right. Tesla's got not much life, but we can hit pretty hard. Charlie can like sort of help. We can make something happen here, maybe. 
All right, so all that's left is invaders and waves. Wave one. Okay, nobody took a damage because there were no occupied fields. So we get an alien in the lowest one. It's going to be over here. It's kind of annoying to get to with the webs. And then anyone can discard a card. Well, that's easy. Hey, Charlie, discard one of your many useless cards. Thanks. So no placement there. And then the Martian invader uh, can't get to us with three move. So instead, a single threat increases, and then the only end of round is them increasing threat again. So that will get us to the second one of these. Ooh, I know I've seen that one a bunch, but uh, that's it for now. So if we can do 18 damage, we win. Um, that might be a tall order, though. But hey, it's a lot easier to fit everything on camera now. Uh, okay, that's Tesla. Tesla. So I realize the only problem about having Tesla... So I realize now the problem with having Tesla move really far away is that now we have to move really far to hit anything. Well, you can just maneuver a bunch and save up cards, right? That would make sense. So sure, I'll maneuver once to go onto the web. Another repulsion blast. Then I'll maneuver again, go over here, get rid of the alien, and get a death. Ra oh my gosh, if I use both coils, that's a seven? I love that. Speaking of, his second coil will charge. Theoretically, the Martian should move next to him, and then he'll be able to do the one plinky damage. All right, that was cool. And, oh man, I wanted to <laughs> wanted to have Charlie go like after the aliens so that we could uh, get rid of Martians and stuff. But right, he's also going to move. Um, he doesn't want to get closer to the Martian than Tesla because Tesla can uh, defend way better. All right, so first, long shot. If the opposing fighter is not adjacent, to, ooh, get plus, uh, get five value instead. That's an awesome card for him. All right, he'll move one, two, and then if the Martian's going to move there to attack Tesla, I want him to be like there or there or something. So we'll have him maneuver again to there, I guess. And he's getting another card he can't use. Okay. All right, and then uh, discard a card or place an alien. Thanks, Charlie. And then takes a turn. They're going to Tesla. Let's block with uh, this three card. And we'll get to draw a card or two or three if we discharge some coils. Uh, now, Tesla's only got four life, so this could go badly. Four. The value of the opponent's card is two and cannot be changed. Ouch. Oh, wait, no, that one's not active. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. And then after combat, oh, place the Martian invader in a space bordering the lowest numbered empty field. That's actually okay because that's right next to us anyway. But yeah, so I do take uh, one damage. Okay. And yeah, I think uh, I'll do that. And then if Charlie wants to get like the five value attack, he can move there. Okay, and then I can draw a card or discharge to draw more. You can only have seven cards. I'm just going to draw one and uh, save my coils to do a free damage to the boss. It gets me another. So wow, I have a lot of these. Okay. And last one should be, yes, adding an alien because no one took damage. It's going to be conveniently enough right there. And that means blip, blip, and we're ready to go. Punch this alien in the face. Going to punch this alien out into space. All right, all right, all right. Okay, that's Tesla. Cool. So he gets the free plink on the Martian. And then I could move the Martian one. Ooh, which means Charlie would still be able to hit it with that five. Yeah, I'm going to do that, I think. Because even though Tesla doesn't really need it, I'm going to have him move and get rid of this guy. I don't want to get that plinked one damage automatically. And he draws Lightning Storm. After combat, ooh, you can discharge, deal one or two automatic damage to each opposing fighter in your zone. He's not in my zone. Green versus gray. But it's a three block. That's good. It does bring Tesla to eight cards, but you only check that at the end of your turn. And then for his second action, he's going to do Death Ray. It's a three, but he can during combat, so I can see what uh, the Martian's card is first, make it a five or a seven with my coils. All right, a Martian, what you got? Lights in the sky. Oh, at plus two, this card's value, because that one is uh, triggered, so it's four. And then, oh no, he's going to teleport far away. All right, well, I'll just go ahead since he's going to be so far away anyway. Discharge both of these to make it a seven versus four, so he takes three damage. Which gets him to 14, not enough. Then he goes to the highest numbered empty field. <sighs> okay. Um. If he goes one, two, three, four. Yeah, I, I don't want him to attack if I can help it. So that seems better. Hopefully for once. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we are placing an alien in field one. Nobody got hurt. And then he takes a turn. We just increase threat by one. I'm cool with that. Although once again, we'll have to move really far. But we got a ton of cards to like boost our movement. So that's fine. Okay, and now it's Charlie. I think I want him to attack the alien, I guess. So I'll maneuver for his first action. Oh, you got another better together. That's nice. Although he's not next to Tesla, he could heal them both. All right, how far does he have to be to shoot? Um, there. So he'll have to discard something to boost uh, at least one. He'll discard that one. So burp, burp, burp. 
And then the best uh, thing he's got, he's going to do a long shot. Since he's not adjacent, it's worth five. Oh, man, it's this again? <laughs> okay, so Martian's only taken one. Where is their deception card? It's only three cards left, so it's one of those. That's a single damage from our best card. Darn it. And instead they go adjacent to the highest numbered field. Eh, what the hey? Let's have them uh, closer to Tesla, I guess. And last one is, ah, discarding a card. Okay, so Charlie will discard. That's his last useless anti card for the moment. And then sadly, we do have an occupied field, so this does go all the way up. And yeah, if this goes to the right again, we lose. We still gotta do 13 damage. Uh, ah, Martian Invaders first. Okay, attacking Charlie. Charlie's only got three life, so we're gonna block with a four. Ooh, no! After combat deal. <laughs> that's, they both got killed by these freaking abilities. All right, well, that's it for Charlie. I guess he's not doing anything. Darn it. And then place the Martian invader in a space bordering the highest number in empty field. Well, that's where he already is. Uh, yeah, I can't get him closer to uh, Tesla, can I? All right, and next is anyone can discard a card. Well, darn it. That's only Tesla now. I guess he'll do it. Uh, what does he not need? Uh, the Repulsion Blast. And then, oh, Tesla takes a damage automatically for being next to a Martian. Yikes. And then there he is. And so let's see, there's no way for him to get next to the invader. So, and he's got six cards. So maybe I'll maneuver to get rid of that guy so we don't advance threat too quickly. And then start moving toward the Martian and then like hopefully come to me. So sure, first maneuver, we'll just, I guess I could go like there, I don't know, or whatever. Sure, we'll stay there. We get another death ray, I like that. Maybe this time uh, we'll actually hit well with it. That gets rid of that guy. Okay, then second maneuver, we're gonna have too many cards, we'll have to discard one, is the one that charges coils, okay? And two, three, they can still reach me, sure. So let's get a little bit away from the webs. Yeah, I think I have too many. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I still think Repulsor Blast is pretty dumb, so let's get rid of that. And I'm charged up. I really hope the Martian goes first. Let's begin a first, this only advances a single space, that's good. But yeah, if the Martian can go first and not kill us automatically, because you seem to have a lot of cards that do that. All right, I'll discard a card. Uh, I'll figure it out in a second. Okay, and then they're going to place an alien. Okay, cool. <laughs> so mine's the last card, so they will go before me. I mean, I think that's cool. It all depends on how it goes, right? I right, had to figure out which card. Let's get rid of kinetic induction. Okay, so they are charging at me. Now, I need to hurt them, but I also need to not die. Uh, oh, my gosh. Is my highest defense a three? I guess I'm using that. This could be the zero. Oh, no. Four. Okay, so I'm alive. Barely. Um, oh, and there's not this. Holy crud, y'all. Look. At least I know exactly what this last card is. Uh, it's their zero, so I can hit him pretty hard. Uh, that's the only symbol not showing. That's cool. Place an alien in each field bordering the Martian invader space. Okay. Which is only seven, which makes uh, two occupied fields, so we won't lose at the end of this turn. Now, I could discharge coils to deal some damage, but now that I know the zeros on top, I don't want to. All right, and it's me. Let's see if I can do uh, 13 damage. Well, no, no, it's 12 because I'm starting next to the guy. I know I can do seven. So I'll get him down to five. <sighs> Let's see what happens. Okay, so first things first for sure. Death Ray discharging both coils to get it to a seven. And then, <laughs> oh, it's a zero. So he takes seven damage. He's down to five. I feel like that's the best I'm going to do, though. Now I shuffled his deck. It'd be great if the zero is just on top. I know it won't be, but that'd be awesome. Okay, uh, so I'll use fully charged to recharge both coils, because then I can do seven hertz, gain an action, and draw another card, and, like, just attack again. <sighs> I mean, I'm not going to kill him. He's don't do enough damage, but whatever. Let's try it. Okay, so I'll attack him with seven hertz. Uh, so as long as I discharge at least one coil, I'll be able to go again. And two. He does have that symbol. Okay, so I do zero damage, and then he teleports to the highest numbered field. Gosh darn it. And I'm going to put him there so he can still reach me because I think I'll lose from uh, <laughs> invasion advancing otherwise. Okay, so I could... I'm not going to draw a card, or am I? Um, okay, sure. I'll, I'll discharge both to get another action and draw a card. Lightning Storm is not going to do it. At least it is defense, though. Okay, and then with my new action, I'm going to maneuver because I think I'll lose automatically otherwise. So I'm going to go like to here, I guess, and get rid of the alien so he doesn't automatically plink me to death. I get another card. It's only a three defense. There's a high chance I'll die here. But we're going to stop there because there's one occupied field. Boom. Oh, so I could have put him farther away. Well, whatever. We'll see what happens. I could theoretically go before him. That'd be cool. What's this one? Uh, discard a card. Um... Okay, I guess I'll get rid of um, kinetic induction. I don't think two defense will be enough to keep me alive. It's definitely not enough to hurt him. And then, okay, I'm not adjacent to a field, so I don't take a damage. 
Uh, we do add an alien to the lowest numbered empty field, which is over here to finally get some love. And then ah, he's first. Uh, <laughs> I got to survive. He's moving over here. Um, and I'll block with lightning storm. I have one life, right? Yeah. And that's a five. <laughs> all right. That's all she wrote. Got him down to five life. Uh, so it wasn't a complete blowout. And again, I was playing with an event card that forced me to kill all the minions. So I could have been like going to his face a lot quicker. Uh, clearly got some bad luck with Annie dying. But that was Unmatched Adventures. And I'll have a review of this one coming up some point here. Got so many games to cover. I'm not sure when, but hopefully by the end of the year. So thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming. And I'll see you at the next stop. And we end our playthroughs by thanking our top tier Patreon supporters. So a big thank you to J. Willie MF and Joshua Thomas. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.